I would like to present this 62 year old lady who's had recurrent Jupiter's disease in her right little finger. She previously had an operation in 2002 with a standard fasciectomy that was required to be revised in 2005. When examining the finger, it was noted that it was purely a PIP joint contracture of 90 degrees. Even when flexing the MP joint to 90 degrees, the PIP joint could still not be extended further. On performing a digital analysis test, it was noted that there was an absent on the digital artery, and the patient did note that there was or had been alter sensations since the last surgery. The surgical options here were was able to either perform a standard fasciectomy, a dermofasciectomy, or try something different. The risks um, from a standard type surgery um, would include loss of the finger uh, due to the absence of one of the arteries. It was felt that with the ability to palpate a specific ulnar cord, the, the use of Zypex might be useful here, as the risks to the finger would therefore be less. Within the UK, there are specific guidelines on the use of Zypex, and the instructions are very clear on how much it should be used and where it should be injected. The basic principle here is to inject a small amount of the enzyme into the cord in three specific areas. Those surgeons who have performed needle fasciotomy would be or will be very used to placing a needle into the cord and you can tell how deep you are. The objective here is to place the enzyme into the cord itself rather than beyond it and therefore decrease the risk of neurovascular damage. The injection itself is not performed using any local anaesthetic. Surgeons should pay particular attention to following the manufacturer's guidelines and training when performing these injections. Tendon rupture is a recognised complication. It is imperative, therefore, that the injections are given into the area of safety. This is highlighted at the time of training. A metacarpal block is used when manipulating the finger at 24 hours post-injection. This photo here is taken prior to the injection of local anaesthetic where there is evidence of bruising without any significant swelling. The main risk when performing a manipulation 24 hours post injection is the risk of tearing the skin. You can see here that when I gently manipulate the finger the MP joint is flexed to 90 degrees and I gradually extend the PIP joint. In this case you can see the actual changes in the skin over the proximal phalanx. You may also note the degree of finger ischemia that occurs just with the stretching of the vessels. In retrospect, I therefore wondered that if I had performed the operation in a standard manner, how anxious I would be when the tunicate was deflated, waiting for the finger to revascularize. Both myself and the patient felt the cord snap at the time of the manipulation. As it was under local anaesthetic, she was not experiencing any pain at this point, more of a sense of vibration within the hand. One of my biggest concerns on managing this lady's little finger was the pattern of the disease. As we know, when it's mainly the PIP joint that is affected, there's a high chance of collateral and volar plate stiffness and contracture. Even after a standard operation where all the Jupiter's disease is removed, the volar plate may well remain tight and require to be released. We know from our experience that often results are poor in these situations with returning contracture in the weeks after surgery. Therefore, it was quite possible for this lady to undergo an operation such as a dermofasciectomy, a prolonged recovery, and still have a degree of residual contracture at the PAP joint. I think it's important here to identify the degree of hematoma and contusion to the patient's finger, which occurs at the time of the manipulation. The patient should therefore be reassured that it's a normal part of the course and this will settle spontaneously over a period of about one week. The blisters here do not need to be aspirated or de-roofed. Recommendation after manipulation is to splint the patient for a period of time. This depends on the severity of the contracture. One week post um, injection and manipulation and already the skin started to improve. The main problem I could foresee in this case 
with the fact that we had not lengthened the volar skin through surgery and therefore it remained tight. My feeling was that with ongoing splinting and hand therapy we could stretch the skin and stretch the PIP joint. I find that intermittent use of a splint, dynamic splint such as a Kapner splint can be useful. Passive finger strengthening exercises should be undertaken in the meantime. This is a patient's hand now, five weeks post injection, and you can see that the skin has healed up nicely. The patient, however, continues to have a degree of contraction around the PIP joint. It is a springy blocked extension. It can be stretched, especially when the MP joint is flexed, suggesting that there is some tightness in the fuller skin plate. Overall, we feel the procedure has been successful. The patient felt this procedure was less dramatic, had a quicker time of recovery than our previous surgeries. Overall, she was very happy with the results.